everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Welcome everyone and today we are going to do some bookmarks again, another type of bookmark and I'm going to show you how to create this uh, quite attractive deckled edge on your paper so that you can have something which has got a, a lot of character. And uh, this is a piece of um, 600 pound quite stiff Arches watercolour paper. And um, the way we're going to do this to create this deckled edge, this is the natural deckle that came with the, <coughs> with the paper. And uh, this is a side edge that I've just um, created. Now the way you do that is you just, I've marked out my two and a half inch sections along here. I think that's what they were, it's about five centimetres, yes. And uh, so then six centimetres. I'm going to take, I've got a paper knife here or an envelope own, opener and it's not very sharp but it's quite, <coughs> quite solid. And uh, don't use a knife because if you use a knife you'll cut straight through it. So I'm using a metal ruler, a metal uh, letter opener. You could use bone as well, probably work just as well if you've got one of those bone paper folders um, like this. That would work as well. I think this is plastic, but they used to make them in bone. You could probably use that. I'm not sure, so I'll try both. And then I'm going to just uh, score along that line to divide. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I do need my coffee. And then I'm going to bend along that line, just gently bending it so we get a nice straight bend like that. Bend it both ways. <coughs> Be careful not to um, crease it anywhere except where you want it to be creased. So do that. And then to make this work properly, what you do is you just come along with a paintbrush and clean water and you just wet it on both sides, ideally. I'm coughing because I was running around catching the sheep this morning before we started and being as I'm a <clears throat> bit asthmatic <coughs> it started off my cough. Right so there we are and then what you do is you just wait a couple of minutes you can feel when it starts to um, to move yes might need to let that just... It's quite thick paper, so you can't very easily rip it. This is why you have to do this. And then just put your ruler up against that line again, and then hold it firm and tear. have a nice deckle edge on both sides. And then we can start painting our card. So, do the next one. Just 
smooth that down with the bone. I should do that on this one as well. do that again and this time I'm going to try it with the uh, the bone uh, folder rather than my paper knife and see if it makes any difference if you haven't got either of these things the back of a of a knife would probably work fine Sheep are very lively this morning. I've had a complete change in the weather. Yesterday it was scorching hot, and today we're back to miserable grey. Honestly, you never know, do you? Let's see how this one works. Now I'm in a hurry, you see, and I've made a mess. So we'll just carry on from the other end. That's fine. And if you do have a little rip, don't worry, you can just glue that with a little bit of um, a Pritt stick or something like that and it won't show once it's finished. So now yeah, we've got two. like this I used to be years ago I used to be absolutely obsessed with this decal edge I do have my strangenesses you know um, I just loved it and I used to really go out of my way to find things that were decaled you can do this with a painting if you're going to do a painting that you want to give as a gift make a decaled edge all around it you can even do it after you've painted it to be honest and it doesn't have to be very thick card. You can do it on a thinner one as well. Um, and then you can mount it on a piece of mount board, not hiding the edge, but using the edge as a decorative feature. I'm going to use that brush just to make it easier and quicker to run the water down there too. like that and then I'm going to bend it. There are so many different ways of doing this kind of thing. You just find the way that suits you, the way you feel works best for you and your paper. <clears throat> but I think this is a very good feature to incorporate into presents when you give people gifts. I don't know if it's still the case, but teenagers used to love deckled edges. I do remember that. I'm sure it's still the same. I mean, any kid that's interested in art and craft and so on. There must still be some. So let's see how this one tears.
Okay. So that gives us three and There we are. One, two. Doesn't matter about the mark, that won't show. Once it's been painted. One, two, three. So now we can start on the painting side of it. This is my new Kuretake pen. This is bigger, but really, I don't know if it's going to make much difference. I think the brush is larger and also the container, the water container is larger. Whether or not it's going to make any difference to how it works, I don't know. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm just going to, for this particular one, this is a test and uh, we'll see. What I was thinking of doing is just to paint a nice blue background. Just to evenly stop short of the edge. Of the paper. So in other words, this is a background and Using the water brush, if you just squeeze gently as you apply the paint, you can make it spread out with much less effort than using a regular brush, I think. Uh, I don't know, I'm really quite taken with this, this uh, brush. So I'm going to do that one with the water brush. And then to compare, I take another one and I use my um, round synthetic. I think I'll use a size 11. This is my draw well brush. And uh, just see if it makes any real difference. I mean, if it doesn't make any difference to the quality of the painting, then I think that's a score for the water brush because of course it has that benefit of being something that you can take with you into, uh, onto a plane, into the car, waiting in the office of the solicitor. Uh, oh, I don't know why I said that. I suppose if you're hanging around in an, any kind of waiting room. Well, perhaps we don't do that anymore since we had the pandemic. So yeah, that's the same kind of deal. So that's number two. Doesn't really make much difference. So yay for the water brush. So we're making a set here of um, autumn themed, or not autumn, late summer, themed uh, bookmarks and we're going to have them, they're going to be floral and um, I was thinking of having one with elderberries, one with blackberries and one with um, crab apples. And then I'm going to texturize that a little bit just by coming in with a paper towel and I'm just going to lift off some of the color using the paper towel. And that will give a more even effect. So they've all got about the same 
and it also helps a little bit with the uh, with a bit of texture for the background. So if you get a bit of a run like that, personally I don't think that really matters at all. But on most paper, I'm not sure if it will work on this one because this is very um, quite old. This is very old paper actually. But on most paper, you would be able to tidy that up. I can't do it because this is old, but that's not a problem. It just adds character. So there we are. I need to let those dry thoroughly because the paper being quite thick, it will have absorbed quite a lot of water. So we'll let those dry. And luckily, because it is such thick paper, they won't bend. They will dry flat. So I'll be back in a minute when I've poured out my coffee, which was just burbling away in the background. You might have heard that. Okay, back soon. Reinforced by a cup of coffee and a slice of cake, I'm now ready to carry on. So this is now completely dry, and this is the first one we're going to attack, which will be our um, elderberry. And although I am going to maintain the irregular edge where I've painted it, I don't want to go over that when I do the next layer. So I'm just going to put some washi tape along there just to keep that edge clean. This one's about to run out. Good job I got some more the other day. And uh, so we put that one down there. Um, yeah, so this one's going to be the elderberries. And I'm going to put some elderberries at the top and the bottom. So up here and down here. And then I'm going to put a little bird in there and I'm going to leave space in the middle where you can inscribe either a, um, a motto, some kind of uh, inspirational quote, or you could put somebody's name if you're giving it as a gift to a particular person or whatever takes your fancy. So um, let's do the drawing first of all. And we'll start from the top um, with put in a couple of leaves. Like that. And then the elderberry twiglets are kind of they're awful because when, when you're trying to make elderberry uh, syrup or jam or whatever, you don't want to eat these berries. And they have these little uh, twigs everywhere. So we'll just, this is quite fun. You just do this at random. Just draw the circles at the ends of all the little Um, I'm just trying to think what you would call those little bits, I don't know, <laughs> stems I suppose, yes. Something like that, and we have another one coming down here from behind the leaf. So that'll do for that. And then down the bottom, we do something very similar. We have a leaf coming up from the bottom corner. Another one here, perhaps. Maybe one coming out this way. And um, so I'm going to put a little bit of a branch here. We'll have a berries coming out. Like this. And here I think we'll put a little birdie. So just give 
give him slightly more of a stronger branch to stand on, put his little feet and uh, sharpen him up in a minute and uh, a few more elderberries down here okay so that's the start and I'll be back in a second when I've chosen the palette Okay, so I've had a think uh, about the colors I'm going to use and I'm just going to show you um, using up some space in this uh, sketchbook here. Here's a page that's not got anything on it. Sorry for that jolt. Um, I'm thinking that um, the way to come up with the, the dark color of the um, berries is probably to mix um, Windsor Violet or Conacridone Violet with neutral tint. A neutral tint is not quite black and not quite Payne's Grey, but it uh, takes very nicely to a violet tint. So that looks like this. And you can darken it by adding more black or more purple. So that way you'll be able to get the shape with some shadows and I think that will work well. And the other reason for using that colour combination is because then I can do the leaves of a, by mixing quinacridone gold with the violet colour. I'll just grab another one first so I don't contaminate it. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, to make a kind of dark, sultry sort of green we can use um, quinacridone gold and violet and if we want to make that greener so we're going to have the two elements there then we'll grab some um, phthalo, phthalo, <laughs> phthalo blue and that together with that gives us a very good rich green. You need, you need the purple with the phthalo blue to make the green. So you can get all sorts of shades of green like that. Okay, we don't need very many for this particular painting, but that's something that uh, you need to know a good way to because this way it harmonizes you see that's why you get the good color schemes that we are always aiming for okay so so that's that so i'll put that out of the way and um let's do this now so we're going to go for some green There go the dogs again. Somebody cycling by on a bike. I'll put that out of the way. That's just as a, an illustration. So we'll just drop in some green and some um, quinacridone gold and maybe a little bit of purple at the back there. And this one too. Just bring it to a little point there. A little bit of shadow on one side, say. Okie dokie. And then I'm going to paint the berries and then I'm going to draw in the stems afterwards. So we'll go back to our violet and our um, neutral tint. If you haven't got neutral tint, that is a good colour to have. You can use it to make a shadowy version of any colour if you want to, really. So we're going to put in the berries and when you do the berries, just leave a little light, like as if you were doing an eye. 
um, not a letter I, a bird's eye, for example. And then you'll find they look more realistic. And then you can come in with a tiny bit of very dark, usually near where the stem is, like that. And then that you can just let that blend. And then you'll want to do some of them lighter. That's a bit too wet. And having the blue background is quite good because that's going to give you another little bit of variation. And just keep chopping and changing. Swapping out a little bit. We will rub out um, the pencil marks afterwards. These berries they are quite dark, but we don't necessarily want to make them look as dark as they actually do, because they're just then they'd be just black dots, wouldn't they? This is the kind of painting that after you've done this, you could, um, you could ink it. And down here, we need our leaves again. entirely up to you what colour you do the leaves, of course. You might want to do them a nice bright and cheerful green, which would look good too. Some of the berries are going to be a little bit greenish as well, or yellowish, because they're not quite ripe, you can do that. Or you might want to keep them all purple, or whatever colour you want to call that. There we are. Now the um, bird. I thought that would be a, um, um, a uh, what did I think? A great tit, a great tit, that's right, which is in here somewhere. I have to look in the index so I get his colouring right. Great tit. Uh, great, great, great. Oh. It's under T for tit. Yes, there we are, 37, page 37. Oh. There. I know it's here somewhere. There it is. Right, so he has a yellow chest, like that. And then we can use neutral tint for the top of his head. And then 
and he's got a sort of shape and then down the front and then his tail looks a little bit mauvish so we'll do that and then we'll just drop a little bit of black in there and we'll just indicate his wing And he needs an eye, and I think this is where I'm going to go for the pen. There they are. And an even finer nib. This is a good set, this, because it's got all the sizes. This is a 0.05, and we'll just very lightly indicate his, his beak. Now, there is more than one way that you could do this, but I am going to do it like this because I don't think I want to actually paint all these scritchy scratchy little bits and pieces. So I'm going to do it this way. And then we'll come in with the eraser and rub out the pencil. And depending on what it looks like, I might um, emphasize the berries with pen and ink as well. We'll just see what that looks like. We'll put in some veins in the leaves using the pen again. And this one. Nice fine lines look quite interestingly graphic. So the next step is going to be to take off the washi tape, I think. out our little um, edge that we had around in the first place and I'm going to just hopefully, hopefully that's completely dry so I can rub out the pencil lines. So this morning, guess who led the great escape? It was Jerome, of course. Somebody had created a hole in the fence and that very well could have been Lottie, but I think actually the sheep leaning on the fence is causing a problem, so um, not gonna blame her, but anyway. So we came out after breakfast to find four sheep in, in the garden, not the right bit of garden. <laughs> so that was an exciting little shepherding stint that we had to, all three of us out there with our sticks and you don't hit them, you just wave the stick and they, they don't like sticks, they tend to run away. So we've developed quite a good system for getting them to move closing in on them like three wolves and they will just run away. Very good. They know we're joking. They're not really afraid of us. 
they know exactly what we want them to do. And so there we are, that's, that's that. And we, uh, I think I did an extra berry up here, didn't I? And if at this point you think, oh, I've missed one out, then just pop another one in. And you might also have missed out the stem. Lunchtime. Uh, yeah, so there we are. And um, like I said, if you're good at uh, calligraphy, you can put a slogan in the middle like that. I've just cut that out from somewhere. It just says Garden Bliss. I think it would look better if it was on two lines. What do you think? Uh, it's just completely random. But put that there like that and it could say person's name. It could say more than that. It could say something like, um, um, I'm never happier than when I'm in the garden. Anyway, so there we are. And you're going to then make a hole in the top, put a little ribbon through or a piece of wool or something like that. And there you go, Bob's your uncle. That is the first of a series of three bookmarks. You could use this to make a whole painting, obviously. You could develop it in goodness knows how many ways. Um, and the blackberries and the crab apples are going to be coming soon to make a nice set. And uh, so there we are, that's the final painting. Um, I need to mention membership. We've got a channel membership set up now, whereby if you want to, uh, you can support the channel by um, just signing up for one of three levels of membership starting at $2.99 a month. Um, I don't know whether everybody knows how to um, get to the channel, to our channel, to Dine Anton Studio, but if you go there, go to the channel and you'll find there is um, a membership tab and a community tab and if you explore those you'll find out all that you need to know about how to join um, as a member of the channel and there's lots of perks uh, that you get for that uh, small contribution. And so, um, yeah, have a look and I will keep mentioning it if you haven't, if you haven't seen this video yet, which of course you wouldn't know because you wouldn't have seen it and then therefore you wouldn't have heard me say this. Um, yeah, we'll keep on hammering on about it because we want to give you lots of extra stuff and this is the best way that we can do it. There will be all sorts of things coming. And go to Facebook if you're interested in Facebook and you do join the membership then there's a special group, private, totally exclusive for people who join the two higher tiers of the membership. This is a fairly new thing from um, YouTube and it's an alternative to Patreon. And because it's so much more closely linked with YouTube, it's uh, easier for us to administer, but it gives you the same sorts of benefits. So that is more than enough wittering now. And uh, have a go at this. I don't think that came out too badly. You could put more birds on it if you wanted to. It's not quite dry yet, but at the end of the video, I'll put a, a picture of it up to completely dry, so that will probably look better. Right then, I'll let you go, and I'll see you soon. Bye everyone, bye bye.